Hi everyone, my name is Tamid Saleh and welcome to a little video I thought I would make looking at the Red Bull situation where they have of course replaced Gasly with uh, Albon mid-season. It's not of course the first time they've done it. They did it with Max a couple of years ago and what a decision that turned out to be. But yeah, I want to see exactly why they have made this switch and if it's a good call or not. I believe it's a very smart move and one that had to be made really from Red Bull. And I'm going to tell you the reasons why I believe that. If you're new to this channel and a fan of Formula 1, then please do subscribe as I do release uh, race reviews after every single race. And also look at topics such as, you know, is Max, Max Verstappen becoming the best driver on the grid? If you want to check that video out, I'll put a link up here somewhere and also in the description below. But for today, we're going to look at the Red Bull situation. So without further ado, let's roll the intro. Here he is again. That's astonishing. It's absolutely So with nine races to go at well, the midway point of this season, Red Bull have decided to replace Gasly with Albon. Uh, it's a decision I feel not many are surprised and I feel like it's a very smart decision. The, the funny thing is, after Hungary, uh, the Red Bull boss Christian Horner did come out and say that they, their intention was to have Gasly uh, in the Red Bull seat for at least until the end of the season. And about a week later, it's all changed. So what's caused this change? For me personally, Red Bull are in a unique position where they have, well, they have four seats where they can chop and change and, um, you know, play around with, with, of course, the Red Bull team and the Toro Rosso team. Now, these four seats, they need to have their best two drivers in the Red Bull car, which is the most competitive. Red Bull have said as well that in the 2020 season, so next season, they want to challenge for the World Championship. So I feel like it would have been too late to make the, this decision at the end of the season as they would rather know their best two drivers now. And by doing this, they have a really good measure to see who will partner Max in that Red Bull car. Max Verstappen, of course, is irreplaceable. That C is his. Uh, so we are now focusing on who gets that second C. Gasly has had a very tough start to Red Bull. Last season, he did very well at Toro Rosso, which, you know, gave him this opportunity. However, you know, he did not become a bad driver overnight. It's just he hasn't adapted to the car. And maybe this time off to Toro Rosso, away from the limelight and the heat really he's getting from the pressure of being in the Red Bull car, it may do him good and it may, you know, give him an extra bit of confidence going into the next season. So the three drivers fighting for this seat is, of course, Albon, Gasly and Kvyat. Kvyat actually was in the Red Bull car, but he was replaced a couple of seasons ago, like this, mid-season, um, with Max Verstappen. And what a decision, uh, what a shrewd decision that turned out to be. With the Red Bull situation right now, with Max's amazing form, like he's actually pushing for second in the, in the championship. He's only seven points behind Bottas and he is comfortably ahead of both Ferraris. So in these past few seasons, it seems like Mercedes and Ferrari battling away at the top or with the top two in the bag and Red Bull comfortably third. This season, they do have a real shot of finishing second in the championship. They're only 44 points behind the Ferraris now. So a good back end of the season would guarantee them that second place and of course the benefits that comes with it. I feel like this is a key reason why they've made this decision. As with Gasly, it's kind of like he could fight for sixth and maybe fifth here and there. But Red Bull would not get close enough to the Ferraris to challenge for it. But with Albon, it's something different. It's a massive opportunity for him. And Albon has been like he's been driving very well so far this season with the Toro so and deserves this opportunity another reason why is Red Bull can now match up or pair up all their drivers with each other they, they've seen Albon and Kvyat side by side in the same car so now they can compare Gasly with Kvyat in the same car likewise with Albon given this opportunity in Red Bull if he can you know start I'm not saying he's going to beat Max or start competing with Max but if he can perform better than Gasly if he can you know get a few podiums, maybe even a race win, which I doubt, but I think a podium would be great, something which Gasly could not do. Then you have a clear winner of the three, um, especially if Gasly starts matching Kvyat in the Toro Rosso. If it seems like Albon is performing at a very similar level to Gasly, and then we have Gasly really outshining Kvyat in the Toro Rosso, 
then Gasly is the winner. And likewise, if Kvyat starts outshining Gasly, as you can see here from the point I'm trying to make, it's a very smart decision for Red Bull as they can really now pair up Gasly and Kvyat and then compare it to Kvyat and Albon. At the same time, compare Albon's results in the Red Bull with Gasly, which gives them a really good opportunity in the 2020 season to go with their top two drivers and challenge for this world championship that they, that they want to. They already have Max Verstappen in the team and their boss, uh, Christian Horner, Look, this may be a bit biased, but he's come out and said that Max Verstappen is the best driver on the grid right now. Personally, I think that is a little bit of a stretch. I still do believe Hamilton is the best driver on the grid. I know Verstappen drives a bit of a slower car, etc, etc. But yeah, we, you know, Hamilton's going for his sixth world championship. He's consistently done this throughout his career, even from when he started as a rookie. You know, he was competing for the world championship, even when he was with McLaren when the Red Bulls were dominating and the Ferraris were competing as well, he was still still getting regular podiums in a weaker car. So, I mean, time will tell, but that's what Red Bull, uh, the Red Bull boss has said. The funny thing is, if the season had started four races ago, <laughs> in the last four races alone, Max Verstappen has scored more points than Gasly has this entire season. So, as you can see, he has severely outperformed his teammate. I think the real question everyone is asking is, is Max Verstappen outperforming the car or was Gasly underperforming the car? I think it's somewhere in the middle with Max, you know, achieving more than the car should. But at the same time, Gasly not achieving its true potential as well. Red Bull won't suffer in terms of the Constructors' Championship. Even if Albon was to score, you know, no points for the, for the remaining races, they still have that third place in the bag. And with this now, they've given them that opportunity to maybe even push for second. If Albon, like I've said, comes on, tears the scene up, yeah, they could push for second. So it's really a nothing to lose situation now for them in the remainder of the season. And I'm very excited to see where this one goes. I still believe that Gasly is not a bad driver. He did not, yeah, he did not turn bad overnight. He just hasn't adapted to the car very well. And this is a very good situation for everyone. It may not seem like it for Gasly right now, but I believe it's a win-win for all the drivers and especially for Red Bull. They've been known to make great uh, strategical calls uh, in races, so I believe this is a great strategical call outside the races uh, by Team Red Bull. The F1 calendar begins uh, in about a couple of weeks, of course, with it returning back to Belgium in Spa, a very high-speed track. It's a track I love playing on the games, and yeah, that returns. How will the, all the teams do after their break? Looking at their standings now, I'll quickly talk you guys through it. We still have Lewis Hamilton, of course, top of the top of the tree. He's on 250 points, winning eight of the 12 races so far. His teammate Valtteri Bottas is in second place with 188 points, seven ahead, only seven ahead of Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. Both Bottas and Verstappen have won two races each this season. They're the only three drivers to have won races. It's shocking, really, how bad the season has gone for Ferrari. Out of the first 12 races, not a single victory. They weren't competitive at all in Hungary, so they need to come back strong. We have Vettel in fourth on 156 points, so he's now 25 behind Verstappen. That's an entire race. Uh, we've got Leclerc on 132 and Gasly on 60, 63. In terms of the constructors, Mercedes running away with it. I fully expect them to win their sixth championship, uh, constructors championship in a row. They're on 438. We've got Ferrari on 288. That is 150 points behind the Mercedes. So I think, yeah, Mercedes have got that in the bag. And then we have Red Bull only 44 behind on 244. Fourth place team is McLaren on 82. So like I've said before, it does seem like Red Bull have got the third place in the bag and it's really a roll of the dice now. They've nothing to lose and everything to gain. They could beat Ferrari, something we would not have predicted at all. And it would be an amazing achievement for the Red Bulls if they did pip them. That's it for the roundup in terms of the standings. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do leave a thumbs up. And I want to hear your opinions as well. So please do leave a comment below. Have Red Bull made the correct decision? Do you think Gasly deserves to be booted so so quickly? And do you think Albon has deserved this opportunity to partner Max Verstappen? And finally, please do subscribe for content like this in the future. Thank you very much. Game, set, and match.
Game, set, and...